Mr. Kodogram, new year, new me. Welcome back, my friend. How are you? Good. Uh, new year, same uh, office, same setup. So <laughs> I, I try yeah. to tra- change the lights, you know, I change my outfit. Like I feel like I'm playing dress ups every, every time we do a podcast, you know, I'm like, uh, maybe I need just a staple wardrobe where it's like, you know, every third podcast will be the same shirt or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Like we can't we can't keep changing outfits forever. Yeah. We need to do the, do the Bart Simpson thing where you just got a, a wardrobe of 10 yeah. of the same outfits. I would that's say okay. St- I, Steve Jobs, but, you know, Bart Simpson's probably the same level, yeah. That's true. You're probably channeling more of the Steve Jobs vibe at the moment. I want to see well, what's on your it. feet. Have you got some... some uh, some rude New Balance on? No, no, I don't. I've got shoes on because I, I wear shoes like in the house because I, I have the worst feet in the world. Like they're f- so flat. So, dude, I wear shoes up until I go in the shower or I'm in bed. Yeah. I'd say I'm pretty much the same. I mean, it's a bit cooler down here. So around the house, I've got my uggies on or thuggies as I like to call them. <sighs> Dude, I, I remember mum and dad bought me a pair of Ugg boots when I was younger and just hated them. Like my whole family wore them. <laughs> I, 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 it's like Crocs I'm kind of getting around, but Uggies, I just like I live in Queensland. There should be no need for them to be on anyone's feet at any time. Like they're just, they're a horrible fashion sense and, you know, I don't think anyone can pull them off. Maybe Kanye, I don't know. If he brought out like a uh, Yeezy um, Ugg range, it, then I'd probably be sold, I reckon. I'm telling you, I'm going to pitch it to Dr. Dre and we're going to release Thug Boots. Like it's going to be a thing. <laughs> um, let's jump in, shall we? Um, yep. I've got a few things to riff on today and let's see how we go. All right, first up on my list, we've talked a little bit about this on the podcast before. We've both recently, I think as a result of our conversation, you bought a little X100V and then as a result of you buying a little X100V, I couldn't stop thinking about it and I bought one as well. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about that and I want to talk about the difference between and perhaps the importance for both of us of delineating between a professional camera and a fun camera. Um, What's your experience been so far? Have you had a chance to shoot it? Yes, uh, I've I've really made an effort uh, to have it on me at all times. So, but before this, you know, I, I would always just take uh, zero cameras <laughs> to to an event or even even just every day, like to the coffee shop. I just when I first bought bought a camera, you know, with my Sony's and stuff, I would always have it with me, and you know, I'd take a photo of the dog that's sitting at the park bench and whatever it was. So. And for me, they, they were the experience, that was the experience I had where I was excited always to take a photo, right? But when I look back at it, all I was doing was just documenting, you know, things around me in my life. So for me, I'm a big fan of that documentary style photography. Um, so to have the X100, it kind of brings back a little bit of nostalgia for me because it's, it's just having a camera on me uh, again, uh, and and it is that separation between my Sony cameras where they are purely for work, um, uh, and then I guess yeah, this what X one hundred V is is uh you know purely for f- for fun or documentation. So the way it works is just totally different, and I'm just so excited because all all the dial all the dials are like, you know, manual, you can set it to aperture priority. Uh, but you know, to have again, your, uh, aperture on the front, like all, all these little kind of features that, that necessarily like my Sony cameras don't have, right. My Sony camera, p- pick it up. Uh, and it's like in pro mode, right. Whereas this, it's like, I pick it up and for someone who shoots every day, it's still, I still have to really think about how to use the camera, which is like, interesting so i've i've found over the last say three weeks of having it or, or month of having it uh just just how to get the best out of the camera whereas like when we first spoke a while ago 
and then I, I bought it like the next day after one of our podcasts. I picked it up and I was so excited to use it and 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 uh, <laughs> it it was it was difficult to put it in my hand again because it didn't operate the same as my pro cameras. So I had to really like hack it to to feel like I was getting the most out of it. So um, the first after the first week, I I was think I was not regretting my decision, but I was just definitely second guessing it. So, uh, but now I've had a month, month with it. Uh, I've found out how to use it. You know, I've really enjoyed actually using the on-camera flash as well, because it gives it that, that it's a kind of harsher flash and it's that real nineties style. Um, and I've found a couple of, yeah, exactly. So for me, it's been interesting and, uh, to, to be able to spend Christmas with, with some family and friends, you know, and a bunch of kids running around, uh, I feel like they were way more receptive or even, even adults are way more receptive to, to getting their photo taken with such a small pocket size camera. Everyone just thinks it's a, it's an old school film camera, you know, and I say, no, it's, it's not 40 years old. It's four days old. You know, that, that's, that's how new this thing is. So for them, that, yeah, it's, it's, even for me getting my photo taken on it, it was just like, it, it wasn't that confrontation that you feel when someone has their big DSLR or, or mirrorless camera, you know? So for me, I bloody love it. And I'm, I'm glad that we had that conversation that we went out and bought it. I'm glad it was on sale too. It was still, it's a fairly expensive camera for what it is, you know? So, but yeah, I, I, um, so I've been really trying to, to use it you know daily now and actually i've got a 256 gig card in there so and i'm only shooting jpeg so it will just like you know i've i've literally every photo i've ever taken is on there now so i think that's kind of a cool thing as well i don't have to dump it all the time like i can just leave them on there like i could probably shoot six months of stuff on there and it'll still be on there but what, what's your uh, what's your kind of experience so far well, that first of all, that's really cool because uh, I think it's really gutsy to only shoot JPEG because I've been doing JPEG and RAW on mine mm. and it does slow it down a lot. Like between a click and taking the next photo, it probably takes three seconds or so, I'd say. Yeah. Um, which is a long time to wait, uh, but I just can't let go. I, I just always want to have that RAW file just in case, you know? it's I, I find it really hard to... You know, despite the fact that otherwise, if I didn't have this camera with me, I'd just be shooting on my iPhone or whatever. And, you know, that's just that little yeah. HEIC or whatever that is. You know, yeah. I wouldn't have a raw file there, but I just find it really hard to let go of that last little lifeline. It's like, just in case this is a photo that is the I want to have. Yeah. yeah, that I want to print or I want to, not that you couldn't print the JPEGs. Like, I'm sure they're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. High resolution JPEGs, but just to me, it's it's hard to let go of that. I don't know but if that's um. But for me, that's that's the fun. It's like I don't have to edit. I'm not editing these photos. Like I'm yeah, just using yeah, a film yeah. simulation, and that's it. So that's exciting for me to also. Yeah. A lot of the time, like the editing is is the shit part for me. Like I don't want to have to yep. do it. It's like the the experience and the taking or making photos is is the fun. So. If I'm happy with the film simulation, you know, JPEG, that's it. Um, yeah. And especially to just share with friends or family, you know, using that dongle trick or, or even just the Wi-Fi. Like it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's become really fun and, and the quality is great. Uh, I was looking at a lot of Leica cameras that, that were, yeah, like I'm going to say what, five, six times the price. Um, yeah. Yeah. Whereas this, I'm like, I'm so happy with it. No one cares if I was shooting with a Leica or with a Fuji. So for right. me, th this is this is it. She's gonna be here for the next ten years, I reckon. Oh wow, be cool, be cool. Yeah. Uh, one one of the things that you touched on that I really want to just circle back to quickly is you said for you the fun part is taking the picture, not processing the picture. Yes. And I think that that's something really important just to highlight because I, that has, to be honest, what has stopped me from bringing cameras to family events or barbecues or functions or stuff exactly. with friends or whatever. Because the idea of 
yeah, like at the time, you know, if I'm playing Frisbee with my mates at someone's 30th in the park, um, it's actually fun to take photos of that. But the idea of having to sit down, stick it in the card reader, load it onto my hard drive, make a session in Capture One, sort through the photos, edit the photos, export the photos, Dropbox, send them out, like forget that. Like I'm not... I'm not doing that. And to be honest, that's the sad thing because it's like often when I have taken photos of friends and family, I'll, it might be a few days later, I'll just dump them on a hard drive and probably never go back to them because yeah. it's just adding more work. That, that's to my happened life, to me so I, much. Yeah. Like yeah. I've shot, just had my camera at vents or, or whatever. And, and it, uh, it's, and it's taken me like a month to get the photos to the people, even though they never asked for it. Um, and it was my decision to bring a camera. It's still, I feel bad because I feel like I'm letting them down when it's, I, I didn't have to have the camera there, but yeah, it's like, it's another, you put too much on your plate, you know? Yeah. I'm just going to, uh, Uncle Tony says a week yeah, later, gonna, where, where are those shots? Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to plug their laptop in. So yeah, that, I think that's the issue is that you don't, um, you just don't want to have to be, I guess, working 24-7, you know, that, especially if you've got personal projects and all that kind of stuff on, um, that's when you're using, yeah, all your your bigger cameras, you know, you, you're editing a, a lot more, whereas this I feel like it's, it's just a lot more natural too because... Um, you're not editing editing it to post realistically like mm. you know i might post some in, in a stories or whatever but it doesn't have to be that your style or anything it's like literally just catch capturing fun moments and the way that the, this camera captures stuff is with that film sim- simulation is like it doesn't have to be perfect you know like and i think when i look back at a lot of the the greatest photos ever like then they're not perfect like they're literally just capturing the moment so for me a big thing to get over was uh like motion blur right where like someone will just be moving or whatever but if you look back in time some of the greatest photos there there is motion blur you know which gives that Mm. that action or whatever whereas for me it technically wasn't correct in in my eyes so like i wouldn't shoot any less than two hundredth of a second, but with this thing, yeah, I guess you know it's got one hundred one twenty fifth of a second, right? So for me, like I've been shooting at that or a hundredth of a second, so it has been getting some motion blur, especially with like kids running around or whatever. So uh, for me, it's like it's kind of exciting because it's a new way of shooting as well. So I just think everything about it is just. It is exciting and it's like I'm forever fiddling with the camera and just just pushing it just to see what I can do. You know, the other day I went up to whatever it was, 4,000 ISO, which again, traditionally I wouldn't shoot on and I would always shoot raw so then I could recover some of that grain. But for this, yeah. it's like I, I don't need to do that. So like what, what kind of modes have you been shooting with this? Like what's your experience like as a user? Um, you've just made me write down a few things that I don't want to forget like I always do. So I'm just writing yeah. a couple of things to come back to. Um, th- so have you, this is either going to blow your mind or you're going to be 10 steps ahead of me already and you'll have already uh, programmed this w- well ahead. But Fuji yeah. X Weekly, are you around that? Have you heard of that? No, is it a, yes. what is it? I'm excited to, I'm excited to tell you about it. It's an <laughs> app. It's like a community. It's like a, a website, I guess, and they've made it into an app. And basically, you know how inside the... By the way, I didn't necessarily want this to be about the Fuji X100V camera, yeah. in particular. I wanted it to be about having a work camera and a fun camera. But in so many ways, I think the X100 series is the ideal camera for this because of the things that we're talking about. Um, and there's something else I want to talk about, which is the leaf shutter in the camera. And I'll write that down. Um, but anyway, Fuji X Weekly, it's this community of people who have taken the seven different film simulations in the camera and in 
side the camera, there's a bunch of, you can make your own presets, right? So you start with the classic Chrome, let's say, but um, inside of the classic Chrome, you can dial in a tone curve and you can dial in um, dynamic range and grain and um, what is it? There's like uh, Fuji tone um, or something, or you can change the, you can shift the white balance. So yep. in if you shoot daylight, it'll make it a little bit more warmer and a little bit more red or that sort of thing. Yeah, cool. Anyway, all yeah. these things make up the film simulation and they make up a specific look. So basically this community, Fuji X Weekly, they have uh, made all these brilliant presets, these brilliant recipes that you can program in to emulate Portra 400 or Kodak Gold 200 or uh, yeah, it'll fit perfect. this and um, Xperia that. And um, it's so fun to go through the app and you can see some sample images that people have taken with them. And yeah, I've programmed three or four different um, versions in. For me, the, the um, what what did I call it? The, uh, what's the Chrome one called? I just forgot. I Kodak, oh, no, wouldn't be classic Kodak Chrome. Chrome. Uh, classic Chrome, yeah. Classic Chrome, yeah. So the to me, the Classic Chrome is the best one. That's just the look that I like. I like um, the warmer tones, like yeah. richer, um, you know, I, I like deep tones and, and contrast, yeah. you know. So that yeah. to me is, is my favorite. I, I don't even really need to look at the other ones, to be honest. So yeah, I've made yeah. sort of three or four different pro- profiles based on that Classic Chrome. And yeah. Um, yeah, some of them are a bit darker and richer. One of them is, yeah, like that portrait look, that really pastel um light look. Um, it's got a little bit of grain built in, which I really like. It's it's a, it's a pleasant grain. It's not like a um, harsh, rough yeah. looking grain. It's really pleasant. And I had so much fun just even forget shooting, just sitting down there and programming all the different settings in yeah, and knowing yeah, that I have yeah. those in the camera. Yeah. That's that's like a fun, geeky thing to do. Um, so, oh, that's epic. Um, when we finish, definitely jump on the App Store and download Fuji X Weekly. It, it's yeah. free. There's a paid version, but it, it's completely free yeah. um, with everything you need, and um, it's ace. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I've, I've been having some fun doing that. I haven't shot it too much, just some family Christmas stuff. Um, every now and then, I'll do a walk around the block, just take some photos. Um, had some, some mates over for a barbecue, that sort of stuff. And... Uh, what was I going to say about that? Um, yeah, so one thing that I'm really enjoying about it is the. this doesn't apply just to this camera, but this is what I'm finding through going through this process now is that what you were saying before about the imperfections are kind of what makes it interesting. That's what makes it cool, right? So the reason that we do like film and the reason that we do gravitate to film is because it has all these things that are technically not a perfect, clean, clear, digital, 50 megapixel, A7R4, 3000 R lens. Like yeah, they, yeah. the reason we like the film is for the imperfections, right? Because the, the lenses that we might use on our old film cameras, they might have a little bit of um, chromatic aberration or maybe there's uh, an interesting um, grain or a quality to the film that you use or um, the skin tones don't look exactly like they do in real life but there's a, a really pleasant like flattering shift um, like you know that's obviously the reason that so many people um, like portrait for shooting skin and portraits yeah the yeah. imperfections are what are what draws us to those sort of shots so one thing that I'm really enjoying about the shooting in JPEG, I shoot raw and JPEG, but one one thing that I'm really enjoying is that you can't have it all. And what I mean is in our commercial photography lives, we try and get a balanced exposure, right? You shoot you shoot something, you're trying to get the sky, detail in the sky, you're trying to get detail in the subject and the product has to be sharp and all this. Whereas yeah. if you're shooting JPEG, you can't have it all. You can either underexpose, um, get some detail in the sky and get an interesting look of your mates at at um, barbecue lunch, or you can yep. bring it up a little bit. You blow the sky out a little bit, but you get like a nice sort of milky, um, uh, you know, lighter area look. Yeah, that's really freeing because I feel like I spend most of my time trying to find the right middle ground where I can pull highlights or push shadows and yeah, make yeah. a balanced exposure. 
but at the end of the day, who cares? If it looks cool, it looks cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I th- I think it's that- exhausting to try and to try and think about it like that, to be honest. Yeah. And that's the thing, I think uh when a lot of people are doing their post processing uh they might try and you know really really get a look you know or or people ask how do you edit this how do you do that what's your settings blah blah and it's like none of those things actually matter they they help me get the photo but at the end of the day what i see with my eye and even in the in the post processing how the way i edit it is purely just be the way that i think looks good it's not there's mm. no formula to be like oh you know shadows are up 50 or whatever it is like it it's literally just like yep. i think it looks good that that's that's it that's you know so uh to have that jpeg thing kind of even takes that away it's just like well this is this is how it was when i shot it and uh yeah there, there's literally nothing done to it later you know it's like uh even even in general i don't really crop images because if i've taken the image like that's the way that i've i can see exactly what's happening i i know everything that's in there that's the way i wanted to take the photo like yeah so but yeah i don't know it's it's fun and i think up until now i didn't realize that this was the camera I needed or that, that I needed a second uh, camera that was, that was totally different from my professional camera, you know, because mm. when I got this, I remembered that I really love photography. Like, you know, I know it's my job now, but like, damn, it is so fun and so cool. Like I, I just, it kind of brought that back for me, you know, to be like, shit this this is so cool this this whole week this yeah well, i am you know i i think yeah it's it's cool that that it's that it's kind of re-inspired me you know not even to be the best photographer out there or whatever it is it's just to be like this is so fun i really enjoy it like yeah now i can just i can i can just take it take it wherever i want and enjoy that i'm making pictures you know yeah because I don't know about you, but if I think back to the times when it was the most exciting and fun to take pictures, it's when it it's when I was a bit not out of my depth, but it, it's when I didn't know what I was doing and it was just fun. The process of picture taking pictures was just fun. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure in those days I was only shooting JPEG. I didn't even know what a yeah. raw file yeah. was, and yep. it was it was just fun to um, yeah take your camera to the park and shoot the dogs at the park and then you get home and you're like okay well why did this one turn out good how come this one didn't work like the that fun time in photography i think is because because you're saying you're saying you're sort of admitting that you don't know what you're doing in a way and you're just saying i'm just i'm learning as i go i'm improving every time and that's something that we don't get anymore, I feel like, because there's this pressure. And, and to be honest, the fact that we don't shoot more personal projects means that everything we do shoot has a deadline and it has a brief and yep. it has a, a treatment that we're trying to match. And yep. uh, all of this stuff that just means, I mean, when it comes down to it, it just takes the joy out of it. It takes, yeah. you don't have creative control and it's also you're shooting to try and hit a target. Whereas, yeah, in those early days, it was like every time you go out, you learn something new or you have these happy accidents and just the experience is fun. The pressure is off and it's okay. Yeah, it's okay to suck. It's okay to not hit the bullseye 100% of the time. That pressure's off. And to me, that's, that's... the true freedom and the true enjoyment in photography. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for me, it's like also uh, not having the pressure or the need or the feel to actually post it. Like, you know, I've taken 300 photos in the last month on that camera. I've, I haven't posted any of them. Like, but I look at yeah. it, I'm like, oh, I enjoy it and it's exciting, you know. Eventually, I'll, I'll probably post a bunch. But like right now, yeah, I don't, there's no need to post like, I think social media is, it is that beast that you got to keep feeding and like, 
yeah, it's it's really hard to take take a step back and just be like, well, I'm just doing this because I enjoy it. Uh, you know, I'm not getting paid to take these photos. I'm not like, you know, there's no, I'm not trying to flex on anyone to show them. I'm, you know, like sitting poolside in Fiji or whatever. Like, it's just like, hey, we're just, I'm just doing shit that I enjoy. So, yeah. So what about if if you're not posting your shots? Um, you sort of uh, mentioned this, I think, when you text me about the X100 and I, I let you know that I got one. Um, yeah. So what if we do, at the end of this year, we do make a little a little uh, zine or a book and yep. we just put JPEGs in there? Yeah, I'd be I'd so excited because, yeah, that that's also maybe that's... Uh, like something that's isn't so short term because a lot of a lot of things or goals you have right are like oh it has to be done within the week or like yeah this week I'm going to do this like how about yeah we just set a goal to you know curate 40 images each or wh- whatever the number is to to make something interesting where you know even if it doesn't be distributed to the world or anyone like you know it could be something where me and you have a copy each and then that's our book you know and it's like well this is cool like the these are all moments that we captured freely with it without any pressure you know that the, it yeah so I, I think it's a good idea and you know it, it could again help us uh i don't know it's just like a, it's just a personal project you know which which i don't do many of uh just because of how busy i am so you know yeah it's almost like a, um, it's just like a, what do you call it? Like a mindfulness thing, a mindfulness yeah. exercise, just something to focus on, but not something to worry about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Spiritual almost, meditative kind <laughs> of. Just like distilling it down to its purest form um, yeah. and not just doing it for likes or anything. I really like it. All right, so I want to start to sort of move away from the um, from the Fuji thing for a while. Oh, here yep. we go. Just, uh, you know, capture this <laughs> moment. Here we go. Yeah, I like it. ISO 1600. Jeez. Hey, do what you got to do. Yeah. So I, I want to sort of start to move away from the Fuji thing and yep. speak a little bit more broadly on this topic. And I think it's a good segue because we sort of talked about um, shooting something for print. Um have you had much experience with the weddings and stuff that you do? Do you guys ever supply prints or photo books or any of that? No, not really. I mean, that's where most traditionally most wedding photographers photographer would make their money because they'd charge another yeah. bloody five grand for these photo books. Uh, for me, it's like I would rather over deliver the amount of photos so then they have more to select from, uh, and then yeah they can print out like anyone can go print out from anywhere these days, you know, Kmart, mm. Harvey Norman, what, wherever it is. Yeah. So for me, it's like, it's not something that I tr- traditionally offer because the printing stuff is pretty hit and miss as well. Like you could get a print from one place one week and it'd be really good. And then the next week it'd be crappy. You know, there's, it's not the same person printing every time, you know, there's different stuff, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it'd be very hard to replicate a good product, I feel. So, yeah, I, I haven't yeah, I'm, printed. I'm almost scared to talk about printing too much because I've made a few videos about this stuff and they've performed really well. Like they've been, you know, 100K plus views. And unfortunately, when something does do well like that, you have to sort of stand by the things that you say because yeah, people ask yeah. questions. Like they treat you like a QA, and a like a, they treat you like you know everything yeah. because I suppose in the video you, you're claiming to know everything. But yeah. I've always come from a place of this is just, I'm, I'm figuring it out too and this is how I'm doing it. So yeah. I'm definitely no expert in the printing side of things. Um, but the reason I bring it up is because one thing that I've uh that I've done recently, a couple of weeks ago, um, I had uh, Andrew Bromley, who's in the Legends Club. Um, quick shout out to Andy. He, he came along and um, helped me film something. I photographed a friend of mine who's a barber in his shop um, the other day. 
just bought just one little um strobe in a beauty dish and um he booked a you know good like a client to model while he um cut the hair um like a a guy who who he he knew, knew he would do like a good haircut for yeah and um I'm editing the video at the moment <clears throat> and one thing that I think would be really really cool uh, so on the day I did the shoot afterwards, some portraits outside, whatever. And I I was like on the day, <clears throat> I'm not going to show you because I'll do some quick edits and I'll send them to you on my phone and I'll get your reaction. Yeah. And I sent him just like 10 or so. And I was like, actually, I'm not going to get his reaction now. So he was chuffed. He had some stuff to post. Kind of learned that from you, to be honest. Um, but he was chuffed. But I thought, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go home, edit them properly, and I'm going to surprise him. I'm going to come back. I'm going to have them in a book. I'm going to make a really nice matte soft cover book, and I yep. want to sit down and record his reaction to see them in print because he was like, I, I think he must have had quite low expectations for the shoot because yeah. um, <laughs> I've never really showed him any of my work before, but even just seeing the photos that I sent him off the iPhone, he was like blown yep. away. He was so happy. Yeah, you know, and I went in a couple of weeks later and he's like, bro, thank you so much. Like I, I've already sent them home to my mum in Iran. Like she loves yeah. them. Um, she's printed them out. She's made a collage. Like, I'm, you know, I'm going to have this. It's a good record of, of what I do or whatever. Yeah. Really cool, right? So I've now had this idea. I've mentioned to you before, I want to start to shoot local businesses like this for content. I think it'd be really interesting. Yep. And I want to find and maybe build a relationship with a supplier where I can make these books because how special would it be if the first time the person saw those photos, it was it was like a magazine? Yeah. I don't know. Did you ever get that experience of in the, in the early days for me especially, I would flip through these beautiful photo magazines on this nice heavy stock and, and look at the photos. Um, there was some great uh, – I know um, you guys are probably much more around – the sort of like surfing culture th th than I am, but there are some great magazines sort of at the intersection of like surfing and like photography and lifestyle. Yeah. I used to love looking through those and God, like just on a nice matte, heavy matte stock photos look so beautiful. Yeah. So that's one thing um, that is sort of got me a bit excited at the moment. I want to learn how to do that and yeah. um, I want to rock up and, and, and hand my yeah. photos to someone and see how they react to see oh, themselves like that. It, it's uh again, it's it's tangible and it looks like so. It is nice. It, in the early days, I did uh do a couple of those kind of zines where it was just for me. I did some test prints uh, and then never made any more. But they were such good quality. There's actually uh, uh online. I think it's called blurb dot com, b l u r b, and I actually downloaded about two weeks ago because I want to make a, a Tiger Woods zine of like all the photos that oh, I cool. took of him uh, over the last, you know, couple of years, but just for me personally. But um, I went onto that app again, oh, that website again, and it actually downloads an app for you and then you can actually select from pre-made kind of layouts or templates. So it's actually really easy to use. And then you can just order it mm. through them and then they'll just send it straight to you. So you can order one copy or 300 if you want. But it's uh, it was really helpful. You know, I didn't have to go create my own template or make other ones. But uh, I, f I found that one was pretty good. And, and you can choose from it to be a hardback or a soft cover or what, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's also something that I would like to explore um, I'm I'm trying to been trying to think about ways. Uh, I do want to take on more freelance work. I've got an extra day a week up my sleeve now, and I want to not just take on more freelance, but I want to document the process of what it looks like to try and generate more freelance work, because I think that could be like an interesting either blog post or video or podcast or something on its own. Because I think that's that's the aspect of photography that is not really taught anywhere. How do you actually find clients if you don't have clients? Like it's yeah. okay to shoot for your friends or it's okay to shoot for love or whatever, but how do you actually generate paid work? Um, to be honest, I don't know the answer to that. Out yeah. of nothing, I don't know how to create something out of nothing, but I think that would be a really interesting process to document. And as part of this, I would like to, 
I have some some ideas on how to how I want to attack it, but I want to make like a a specific book um, tailored to what a client or or what a genre of client would like, and just try and get that book in front of them because I think that's something you know that's quite old school. But if if I know that there is a need for this sort of work for that client, if I've gone the extra mile, you know, to perhaps even print their branding on it and you know, maybe it'll cost fifty, sixty, seventy dollars to get a one off thing printed. But it's like yeah. if that lands you, you know, I don't know, a thousand dollar job or a five year relationship with this client, yeah, it's just yeah. like that's such a no brainer. Yeah, exactly. And I think people aren't taking those steps uh to, to just do that extra homework or, or extra effort, you know, before they've even engaged with a with a client. Uh so yeah. Think, yeah. Uh, I recommend it. Yeah, I, I would even go as far as to, I think it'd be cool. Um, this is not, this is not what I was going for, but I'm just trying to think of an example of something that you could shoot specifically for someone. Um, so, for example, um, at my job with Jared, we've been doing some work for um, Melbourne Water, who like controls, you know, basically all the waterways in victoria yeah if that was the sort of client that i was going to like how cool would it be if i went and shot the most you know took beautiful drone shots of like the local rivers and creeks and went to the pier at sunset and shot some shots of the pier and whatever and made a book and actually you know went into the you know m- maybe it's finding who the person is going into yeah. the office um working how to get that across someone's desk. Anyway, that's just an example. That's just something I thought of off the top of my head. Um, but it's something I want to experiment more with. And I think um, the the print aspect and just just the, just the showing that you can go that extra mile and think outside the box, I think that could be um, something really important going forward. Yeah. Well, I think uh, in a lot of other industries, they do that where it's like they'll – I don't know what it's called. I think it's called a tender or, or a, you know, if it's like a pitch for a company. When I was in the engineering industry, you know, you'd always be, there'd be a few jobs up for grabs and you would have to put out a tender. So, you know, you'd, I, I guess, have the costs, you know, ha- have examples of what you've done before, have, you know, a, a pitch, I guess. Um, so pr- probably in other industries, it's, 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 they, they do it a lot. Whereas like, when you're a small business or whatever, you just don't have the manpower or, or to, to do that. Like it's all yeah. the time. Uh, whereas like I'd love yeah. to do that for every job, you know, actually do up this really nice document. And I think a lot of agencies do because they have they have that uh, the resources to do it. Yeah. But. I suppose the difference the difference between me and you is like my, you know, 90 90- percent of my income probably comes from my day job right so i i don't have to worry about that stuff and then on the flip side you kind of do but you have the ball rolling to the point now where your work grows more work so it's not like you're going from zero to one yeah um like we were talking about in the last episode the hardest part is just getting the ball rolling just yeah just starting yeah um yeah i read a really good there's an author called Austin Cleon and he has these series of three little books. I can't remember which one it was that talks about this sort of thing. But um, yeah, it's changed the way I view all this. And his thing was he's an author and part of what was really important for him was documenting the journey of him actually you know, becoming yeah, who he yeah, was. He, yeah. he, he wrote a blog every day, you know, whatever it was, let's say every day for 10 years or whatever. And that's actually how he became well-known because he wasn't that good at it, but he documented the journey of what it was like yeah, to get yeah. good at something. Yeah, I think that's valuable. Yeah. Uh, um, all, all right, have week. you got anything for me? You go first. I'm going to look around my office to see if I can pick something up. I have to do the same, actually. Okay, so for me, uh, being a tech, I wouldn't say lord, just a tech addict, I'd say, (laughs) uh, 
is that I, I love bags. I don't know why I've had way too many bags. Dude, I love bags too. Uh, just like, I don't know. So uh, over the years I've collected, you know, whether, whether I'm the golf bags or, uh, you know, musical equipment bags or bags for leads or bags for zip ties or whatever. So what, what I've got here today are these two, two different bags, two different sizes. So this one I bought first was a Peak Design. And yeah. I thought it was the greatest thing ever because, yeah, it fits a lot of shit. But a lot of shit isn't always good because then it becomes heavy. You put too much shit in here that you don't actually need all the time. Yeah. And then, you know, your backpack or your bag, your bigger bag gets heavy. So I've recently downgraded. Uh, Cara got one of these before me. And uh, this is a Bellroy, just a smaller like tech pouch. So, yeah. It fits less in, but it's just easier. You know, you can just have your laptop charger, your SSD, you know, your cards or whatever. And I found that this is like, I'm just enjoying it a lot more because it fits less, which is counterintuitive, right? But it means that, yeah, I've only got the shit I need. And that's that's the problem with a lot of the bags I had in the past. I had the Ruka, uh, Zach Noyle, bag which was designed with Zach Noyle the I think it's like an underwater dude uh photographer so it was it was great I was like this has so many pockets I can put so much stuff in but then I was finding that I was just cramming way too much crap in and then there'd be stuff in there that you'd leave in for a whole year that you actually had never used so uh, I downgraded to well I didn't even downgrade I upgraded to a Reigns uh bag which literally has one opening here which goes the whole way down and then it has a zip on the front for some stuff and then a laptop thing so it has three pockets it's literally nothing in there but it's full waterproof and it means i can fit way less in so i just put you know a laptop that small bellroy thing and then it's so much lighter portable like i'm not carrying around 20 kilos instead of carrying around five yeah but i'm a big bag guy uh, so yeah, that, that's my, that's my tool is like any bag that you can fit just enough in. Billy Eilish bag guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, love it. I, uh, less is more baby. And, um, I yeah. love Bellroy products as well. Uh, Bellroy, um, Orbit key. Have you, do you have one of those? Um, no, I've, dude, the amount of times it's been in my cart and I've wanted to buy it, but I still just don't, ju I can't justify it because I just don't have enough keys to chuck on it, you know? Well, um, we'll, we'll have to talk outside of this, but I'm, um, yeah, trying my hand in, um, product development this year with another friend of mine. Um, I don't want to talk too much about it because it's very, very early days, but, um, I'm hoping by next, by this Christmas, um, there'll be something we can um, put in our Christmas yeah, stockings. Epic. Um, cool. Yeah, uh, cool. And yeah, I think I'm just going to say the Fuji X Weekly app. Um, if you're a Fuji shooter, yeah. uh, I think they have support for all models. Um, it just, it depends on the sensor. As far as I know, there's like, let's say four or five different types of Fuji, uh, Fuji sensors inside their cameras. And so you click on the film stock that you like and it'll tell you which um, sensors that set it, that a recipe is compatible with. Um, highly check it out. It's a free app or it's a website. I think they have like a forum. They might like have a Reddit or something as well. But yeah, can't recommend it enough. I've had so much fun uh, playing with that. So that will be my tool yeah. of the week. Sick. All right, that's it for another one. Thank you so much if you've made it this far. Um, yeah. I appreciate you joining me as always, Kurt, and we'll do it again soon. Cool. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>